Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to show you how you can deal with anti-framework core exceptions in a way more elegant manner because the way they are right now is bad, like there's nothing fundamentally wrong with them but it kind of feels old, like old C sharp. It is not a very nice way to deal with them. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can use an extremely popular technique to deal with the exceptions of EF Core in a way better manner. So let me show you what I have here. I have a movies API that all it really does is it allows us to create, update, retrieve, or delete a movie. And all that is in this old school controller. Now, we don't need to focus too much into the controller or if you had the minimal API, minimal API, but we are going to take a look at the functionality. So if I just quickly run this API, what I want you to see is I can go here, and by the way, this is all using EF Core and SQLite, so a real database, and I will go to Insomnia and I'm going to say, hey, I want to use this API to create the famous movie Nick the Greek of 2012. So I'll go ahead and create that, and as you can see now it's created, and of course I can go ahead and retrieve that movie if I want. So if I use that over here and I say retrieve, uh, then as you can see, I'm retrieving it. If I use a wrong GUID, then I'm gonna get a 404 not found and so on. So this is a fully functional API. Now, here's the interesting thing. If I go here and I say recreate this movie, well, it's going to fail because the title is unique. Now, in general, for this specific domain, having a unique title doesn't really make sense. We're gonna have to get past that. The reason why is because you can have many movies with the same name even though they're released in different years and technically you can have them even released in the same year. So maybe you want to have a more complex uniqueness constraint but for the purpose of this video I'm just going to assume that the title is a unique constraint. Now what you're going to see and I just surface over here in dev mode the exception that's being thrown. The exception that EF Core is throwing is DB update exception. I didn't really update anything. Now, this is happening because the way you create in EF Core is you use the save changes async, so you sort of update changes. The wording is a bit interesting, but just so we can see why this is happening, in my model over here, as you can see, I have an index on the title, and is it unique? True. So, I can't just create the same movie with the same title. Now, there's many ways to deal with this. For example, I could call the database and say, do you have a movie with this title? And if I do, then handle the request graciously. But that then means I have to call the database for every creation ahead of time. So I have two calls instead of one, which makes it very inefficient. So allowing the database to throw back that exception can be more efficient in some use cases. For that reason, I don't want to add validation. I want to handle this exception. However, this is the same type of exception that EF Core will throw for anything. Unique constraint exceptions, max length exceeded exceptions, reference constraint exceptions, numeric overflow exceptions, all of those exceptions, they are all under the same umbrella. They don't have their own type to handle. This means that if I want to handle this exception, what I have to do is go to my service, find the thing, and then say try and then say catch db update exception exc okay so i have something that put a breakpoint here just to understand exactly what's going on so start the application go back in try to call that endpoint again and hit that breakpoint get the exception and then go in this general exception and try the sticky what is this the inner exception is an SQLite exception. Oh no, no, I have to handle an SQLite exception specific to the database. And what happens if I want to change the database? I have to adapt to whatever that new thing is using. And you have this cascading effect of umbrella types just wrapping the wrappers of the wrappers with some wrapping from Eminem. And it's just very, very weird. So this is a very, very frustrating way to handle these very common scenarios. And by the way, this is something we extensively cover in our DOM training course about anti-framework core. And funny I mentioned that is almost as if I planned it because on DOM train until the 30th of September, we're running a back to school sale. So you can get any course at 30% off. That includes the three brand new courses we just launched, the Boosting Developer Productivity with Generative AI by Kevin Docs, Configuration and Options by Microsoft Senior Content Developer David Pine, as well as a Reflection in .NET course by Nick Constantino. Everything 30% off, 
Plus, you can use BTS15 to get 15% off any of our already discounted bundles and BTS20 to get 20% off our annual Dome Training Pro subscription that gives you access to all of our courses. But now, how do we handle this scenario in a more elegant way? Well, you could start writing extension methods that take this and translate it into another exception that makes more sense for the scenario, but thankfully, we don't have to do that because the community is massive and this is a very common problem, so there is a NuGet package for this. And the NuGet package is called EntryFramework.Exceptions. Pretty self-explanatory, many, many stars and millions of downloads, very popular NuGet package. So if you like what you see during this video, I'm going to put the link in the description, give it a star on GitHub. It's very nice motivation. It's a nice metric so they can be trusted as well and then used. So please give them a star. I'll go ahead and do that now. So what we're going to do is go to Rider and simply say entry framework core dot exceptions and I'm going to use the SQLite, but you can use any of the other ones, MySQL, SQLite, Postgres, and the MySQL, I think, works for MariaDB as well because they have the same connector. I think I haven't tested this. So if I say SQLite and then quickly just install that, then what's what I can do? I can go to my DB context. So what I'm going to say is app DB context. And here I'm going to say use exception processor. And what this is going to do is it's going to add all the mappings necessary to return concrete types on the specific exception you are getting for EF core, which means that I no longer have to handle this DB update exception. I have to go through everything in that exception object and handle every scenario. Instead, for this particular example, if I wanted to simply handle a uniqueness constraint exception, I would say unique constraint exception. Not only do I get a specific exception type for that particular exception, and by the way, yes, it is thrown, so we no longer get that other one, we now get this one, and we get a specific type per specific scenario, which is extremely nice. So if I go ahead and I say send this, then as you're going to see, I'm getting that exception fully populated, and I can go here if I want, and I can get any of the specific violation values. So if I want to get the constraint name, for example, I can. If I want to get the properties, I can. And I can get all of those properties to use them for logging or to use them for some potential retry or really for anything. And I can get the schema qualified table name. And then I still have all the inner exceptions and all that stuff I had before. Now I just have them more targeted and I can handle them way, way more graciously and elegantly. But turns out plot twist because as you're going to see, these values will be empty. And the reason for that is SQLite doesn't actually populate them. The reason why this happened then I haven't actually planned this is because originally this code was using Microsoft uh, SQL server and I wanted to make it more portable. So I moved to SQLite in case you want to grab the code from the description down below, which also made it kind of break. I mean, it's very unlikely you're using SQLite in production for these types of scenarios, so you wouldn't really have to worry about this, but every other type of database will work and these values will be populated. There is a warning for this on the documentation page, so you would know about this if you're using this library. But now I want to know from you, how are you dealing with this situation and are you using this new kit package? Leave a comment down below, let me know. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching and as always, keep coding.